for fast, cheap, and reliable Madden 20 Ultimate Team Coins. Make sure you guys go check out my sponsor, U4GM Coins. Use code Venom at checkout for 5% off. Yo, what's good, guys? Fun and Fire here, back in the video. And today I'm going to be showing you guys a Nano Blitz here in Madden 20. It's one that people really don't know about, one that I've really never seen people run online. So it should be something new for you guys, something that you haven't seen before. Now, as you've seen, the play we're going to be running today is going to be the Fire Zone Bluff Blitz. Now, this is out of the 3-4 odd formation, one of the best formations this year for pass coverage and run defense. Now, this is going to be a very good defense to stop the run and the pass. Primarily is a blitz, but it can also defend the run pretty well. Now, as you guys see, it doesn't even classify as a blitz. It classifies as a zone, and you can still get very good pressure out of it. I've actually been running this play since around Madden 18. I've just been running it off and on, but let's go ahead, hop into the play. We're just gonna hop into the setup first, and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of different things you can do. Now, right off the bat for the setup, you guys see we need that outside linebacker on the left side in, so what we're gonna do is simply just base a line and show blitz. When you base a line, it's gonna bring those linebackers in, showing blitz will pull those linebackers down to the line of scrimmage, you have them on the line. Now, all you really have to do to get pressure is simply, you can actually get pressure by just containing. You don't necessarily have to do anything. Now, this isn't the most effective way to get pressure, but you still can get pressure. And you will see, um, we just got pressure right there. A lot of glitchy stuff happens. Now, primarily, you will see the player we want getting pressure is Michael Kendricks, that right outside linebacker. But you saw Bobby Wagner right there just got instant pressure. All we're doing, again, base align, show blitz, contain. Um, something just extra you can do is shade over the top. I like those purple zones better than the seam flats. Well, again, let's snap the ball. You guys see we're not going to get pressure. This isn't really the best way to run it. Like I said, that's just the stock way. Now, the primarily way that I like to run the blitz is just going to be, again, baseline, show blitz. And this time, what I like to do is just slant inside. Slant inside, that's going to be D-pad left and the right stick down. Um, basically what that does is it's just gonna it should pretty much open up Michael Kendricks you guys see there we go him shooting free and clowning we had two people right there we only sent five against this five-man protection and we had two people come free let's go ahead I want to show you guys the replay for you play this one let's take a look here you guys see we're only rushing those players we're slanting inside but what slanting inside does is it's just gonna get Bobby Wagner to hook onto that right guard Clowney obviously will take that right tackle, but the right tackle has two people to choose between. So is it really going to block the, the outside linebacker? Is it going to block the defensive end? You don't really know. So in this case, it actually blocks nobody, which is, you know, fine by us. So Clowney is able to get free as well as Michael Kendricks. That's really what you want. Typically, uh, Clowney will get picked up by that tackle. And if he does, then you obviously have Kendricks still coming off the edge. So... Again, I'll show that setup. It was base align, show blitz, and slant inside contain. Now, you guys see, before we slant inside, this D tackle was in a hook curl to the left side. You can go ahead, put him there if you want. Like I said, you're not going to be guaranteed pressure when you're rushing four people. Um, the pressure should be pretty close to every time when you're rushing five people. So, again, let's snap the ball this time. You guys see, some glitchy stuff happens with the blitz. I've mentioned it. A couple of times already and you guys see that time Kendricks actually looped which he's in a contain you guys saw the player he was in a contain look at Kendricks just this time actually Wagner he gets hooked onto the right tackle somehow the right guards gonna actually chop block which is something I've really never seen but look at Kendricks he's just gonna loop around and yeah he's just not gonna get picked up but like I said it's a very glitchy blitz it's not gonna be the same every time if that makes any sense so again you guys see some bro, primarily my favorite way to run the blitz though is going to be to put your D end in a hook, vert hook. So this player right here, Shaquem Griffin, like I, you could obviously put a linebacker there, and that's what I like to do when I run the play, so that you can get some better coverage, some better speed. So you can sub a linebacker in there at D end since he's not going to be rushing anyway. There's no reason to not do it. And you guys see, there we go, rushing for instant pressure. That truly is my favorite way to go ahead and run the blitz. You guys see. Michael Kendricks is a slow player and he's still getting instant pressure again here let's go ahead and snap the ball you guys see it's not gonna happen every time but when it does 
it's going to be some pretty quick pressure. That's the inconsistency of the blitz. Like I mentioned, it's not going to be the most consistent blitz per se, but it is going to be pretty reliable as far as getting quick pressure, even if you're not getting that instant pressure. Like I mentioned, though, the best way to get pressure, the best guarantee to get pressure is just going to be to base align, show blitz, and then just slant inside and contain. That's just where you have the five rushers against the five-man blitz, and you're able to get instant pressure pretty much every time down the road. So, like I mentioned, that's my favorite way to run it. Um, obviously, if you need an extra player in pass coverage, coverage, put Shaquem Griffin there. You could also throw your D-tackle, but D-tackle is not going to have good coverage. So, you really could get burnt. They could easily just throw at your D-tackle. Nothing's going to happen. That's why I like to put my D-end right there. And overall, this is just the best way to run it, in my opinion. You guys see, um, usually you can get pressure, um, but for whatever reason, we're not able to right here. Let's just try and run it again, try and get some pressure. Um, but for whatever reason, Clowney's not going. That is what it is. It was working a little bit earlier. Just take my word for it. You guys already did see it work once. It's, like I mentioned, though, very inconsistent. Now, let's say they go ahead, they block their running back now. Obviously, if they motion block, they shade, they can chop block. But keep in mind, if you see them blocking it every single time, then I would go with that rushing three setup. You could even just go ahead and rush the four people, or you could just rush four or rush three. So again, let's just come out in the setup. Here we are. We're just going to block my running back. And you guys see, still able to get pressure right there. Again, that was the five-man blitz set up right there against the six-man protection. So, like I mentioned, that um, blitzing five people setup is definitely probably my favorite blitz setup for this play. Um, like I mentioned, though, if they if your opponent is continuing to block, he's figured out how to block it, then you could be in some trouble. And I would recommend just you know uh, going against it. But you guys see, it's pretty inconsistent for whatever reason. The right guard just chop blocks. I have no clue. I've never seen that this year. That might just be a practice mode type of thing because I don't know. I've never seen a right guard chop block ever in a pass play. Like I mentioned, that could be me. But there you guys see Bobby Wagner. And this time he's able to come free. He did get nano detected there. But like I said, it is pretty much a nano blitz just because of all the glitchy stuff that happens. So now I want to talk about some coverage adjustments that you can do to really disguise this play. Now let's say he's blocked your blitz every time. You want to go ahead, drop in coverage. Something that you could simply do is run it like this, where you just have vert hook and a hook curl. You just put that outside linebacker in him, and you can just run it like this. This is a four-man blitz. Simply, you could also put a spy. Maybe run it like this. You have the contains. And obviously shading up. I like to shade up so my corners don't get burnt. You guys see, we still do have those glitchy contains. Pretty much everything is going to be covered. Now, the thing is, you're not going to get any pressure unless you have a pass rush ability, pass rush elite. One of those things on your defensive lineman. So again, let's go ahead, hop into this. You could obviously run the blitz stock the same way I mentioned. Just... Um, slant inside that's like I said the best way to run it slant inside contain but the way I actually like to mix things up is run it like this where you actually turn into a cover two, put that outside corner in a cloud flat put your strong safety here in a strong in a deep half you definitely want to move him back a little bit though so that he is completely not gonna get burnt by maybe a streak by B or whatever the case may be but you guys see instant pressure that's just a good way to bluff blitz uh, switch it to that little cover three cloud type of a setup again. Let's run that setup again and Like I said every time you're coming out running this play you're base aligning you're showing blitz and you're slanting inside and containing Those are the things you do every single time you run this play no matter what coverage adjustments or even if you're bluffing the blitz or whatever But again, you guys see this time. I'm gonna put X invert hook. Here's my setup and obviously, with your user, you want to user this player. He's not on the rush. He is in coverage. And right when the ball is snapped, you want to run back to the right side. And you want to go ahead, user anything quick, user digs, user slants, anything of that nature. But again, you guys see, we're close to getting pressured. Clowney did just get picked up. He just actually got knocked down. He would have got that pressure. But like I said, this blitz is crazy. A lot of crazy things are going to happen. You've already seen a couple of crazy things. 
But if you're just a basic player, this is, like I mentioned, probably the best setup to run it. It's a simple stock cover three. You're not really going to get beat over the top too much. And you guys notice that it is probably the best way to get pressure. Like I said, this isn't a guarantee. It's not going to be a guaranteed. And your opponent obviously can go ahead and do some stuff to actually prevent that. But you guys see, for the most part, you're able to get pretty quick pressure. And even not if you're not... You're, you should be, we're just pushing him back right there, but yeah, overall it's a very solid blitz, and if you're getting picked up, just send the four people, and you should be able to, you're, you should be in business, for whatever reason it's getting picked up right now, but yeah, pretty much is what it is, you guys have already seen it come through, let's just try and get it one more time here, for whatever reason, I can't even get it. All right, there we go. So you guys see we had two people coming free once again. Like I mentioned, it's a hit or miss blitz, but when you're rushing four, what can you really expect? You're rushing five. Um, you shouldn't be able to expect, you know, easy blitzes or easy sacks every down. So that's gonna do it for the video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a like on the video. Also, um, this is, you shouldn't run this every play. You should just mix it in occasionally. Don't run this as an every down defense. It's just something cool to mix in if you already run coverage based defenses or if you're a send seven type of a player, it's a good bluff to still get pressured. But yeah, like I mentioned, please subscribe to the channel if you aren't subscribed. Majority, like 85% of my viewers aren't subscribed. Hit that sub button if you are watching till now and peace, I'm out of here.